Farm View with Kieran O'Connor on WLR. Brought to you by GlanviaConnect.com. Hello and welcome to Farm View. Well, as usual, it's Kieran O'Connor here with your weekly farming program. Once again, I have a busy show for you this week. When on this week's program, I'll have a grain harvest update and look at the prospects for the remainder of crops to be harvested. I'll also hear about the very successful Not Mill Down honey business in West Waterford and I'll talk with legendary horse trainer John Kiley about an unbelievable run of successes at Tremor over the decades. And plus, as always, we'll have our farming calendar. Farm View with Kieran O'Connor on WLR with GlanviaConnect.com. Ireland's biggest online farming shop and more. Well, with the harvest in full swing for 2021, earlier this week I went along to catch up with Donald Fitzgerald, well known Clashmore native, and of course part and parcel of the gold crop in East Cork. First of all, Donald, harvest so far, so far, so good. Yes, Kieran, uh, I think 2021 has been a very positive harvest to date. Winter barley has started off very well. We had tremendous weather, low moisture, good yields, and that's followed on into the spring barley crop as well, where, to be fair, we're seeing um, some really, really good yields of spring barley. Very good quality as well, particularly from a malting perspective. We've seen oats, winter oats, I suppose, no no spring oats cut to date but winter oats has been very good and I've seen some tremendous yields of spring oats, you know touching four tonnes an acre or even more which is very rare for that crop and there's the early indications of winter wheat which is going under the knife at the moment as that's following through so to be fair, the the really good weather we got in June and July has paid dividends there's nothing like good sunshine to get yields into crops. I suppose when the farmer puts the crop in the ground day one, he's hoping that you know, the holy trinity as we call it, where you try to get the, the yield right, you try to get the price right and you hope then that the weather will come right too. So at the moment those three things have aligned. Uh, the market prices are strong and they're probably increasing in value if anything. So it's all right. leaning towards a very positive positive and optimistic outlook. Obviously with winter probably 50% of the overall crop were into the spring barley in particular which is still the largest crop in the region and indeed nationally as well. How, how is the spring barley looking number one and secondly obviously weather from here on in is going to play a huge role. Yeah, I, look spring barley so far has been very good early sown crops have yielded well quality is good Um, we're probably about 40% of the way in terms of all the spring barley in the country cut so there's still a sizable chunk of barley to be got and a lot of the barley is coming ripe now these days and I suppose the varieties we have a lot of them are are, are tending to break down in straw if they get some bad weather when they're ripe so the next uh, week to 10 days is pretty critical really in terms of trying to make sure we keep as much of that yield as possible in the trailer you had a real delicate situation now crops are ready to be harvested yeah. if the weather was to break you'd be very worried about lodging indeed breakdown and uh, and heads coming up uh, those type of issues yeah and maybe sprouting and wheat is another issue that you could have right. um, but look we, we don't want to wish on any doomsday scenarios like that on us but I know the forecast for the weekend isn't as good as we were hoping for And uh, but um, look the machinery that's there nowadays can get through work very very quickly mm-hmm. and uh, please God the, the crops will come out uh, into the trailer right. as they should now malting barley of course is a huge part of the spring barley crop and a lot of farmers down here in the southeast looking for that added value with malting barley. How are they looking and how how is that aligning quickly as regards protein? Yeah, it's it's an unusual year, Kieran, because I suppose the thresholds for malting barley are that you want it to be under, say, 10.5% for brewing. In protein. And in protein, that, that is right, yeah. And maybe for, for distilling barley, you might need um, something a bit less than that. The proteins this year, a lot of them are coming in at as low as 8%. And it's because of the yield uh, being so high, the proteins are diluted. So... I, I mean, we we talk about malting barley, but really nowadays we're talking about two different types of malting barley. You have brewing barley, which is what's used for beer, and distilling barley, which is what's used for spirits and whiskey production. And different protein requirements? Different protein requirements, yeah. The the lower the protein is what's required for distilling, and a slightly higher protein for brewing. So So uh, that's a new one, really, for for a grower, because normally protein, uh, malting barley was malting barley. Yeah, it was, I suppose. No, the last few years it's been differentiated a bit more, and we have varieties now that are, 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 are more destined for distilling than they are for brewing and vice versa um, and I know the, the major uh, maltsters in the country are trying to find varieties nowadays that they, they, they work both ways if you know what I mean so they're they, these called non-GN varieties and if you get those you, if you have two chances to sell it you can sell it as a whiskey production or for a beer production So Interesting As regards oats of course a lot of oats you mentioned a good deal so far in winter oats and whatever oats down here in the south east huge, huge demand again added value you have, you have the Flavins contract you have the equine oats with, with Lambie and indeed the, and now the um, 
gluten free or yeah um, gluten free is, a, is it becoming a big part I suppose look the, the, the move towards plant based diets and everything else is focusing on, on plant based foods and gluten free as a, and, and as, a, as a lifestyle choice is becoming more popular for people as, as, as they look at you know how, what suits them better gluten free oats is, is, is becoming more popular uh, in, in the line of food ingredients and oatmeal and foods that go with that um, equine oats obviously is a huge part of what we do but the oats market is, is it, it's easily tipped over and if we get a very big overproduction into the feed oat market it's not easy to move that so it's important as suppose when we're growing oats we try and find a value added market for it there's a number of them out there because um, the Flavon contract is huge down here well, it's very very important to the, to the growers in the south east indeed and uh, you know it's, it's great to see that the tradition that Flavons bring to the, the table is being maintained and, and their story is quite unique really when you look at it and you might have seen there in recently there was a, a big case in the UK where a, a, a multinational oat drink manufacturer took another smaller manufacturer to court over the use of a name or something like that uh, but it didn't win so it, it, you know oat milk or oat drinks I suppose we can call it milk we call it an oat drink and uh, that's becoming another option for, for, for the use of oats in the, going forward So overall so far so good winter corn has performed well and, you, and you're pretty hopeful across the board as regards the spring crop Yeah I mean so far so good uh, uh, certainly the stores are going to be well full this year based on the yields we, we're seeing so far we might struggle to fit it all in in the end but that's a good complaint we're probably approaching nearly nearly halfway in terms of what's to be harvested overall um, and if we can get the, 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 the second half shall we say to finish out as good as the first one well then we'll be going very well so. Dolan Fitzgerald Tilly Specialist at Gold Corp and of course Clashmore Native as always Dolan thanks for the update and hopefully we'll talk to you at the end of what should be a record and bumper harvest thanks for talking thank you Kieran. Well, a new exciting stand at the weekly Lismore Farmers Market, indeed Dungarvan Farmers Market, has been the Not Wheel Down Honey and Tilly's Natural Cosmetics. So I got a chance to talk to the man himself, Mary Kojal. Mary, first of all, great to see you here in Dungarvan. It's a big day for you, these farmer markets. It's really lovely to see everybody come. I'm actually doing the honey since about eight, nine years. I started here in Dungarvan Farm Market and it's gone really well for me. We started about nine years ago. I started with just three hives. I became a passionate obsession for me yes and uh, today I have in around uh, 100 beehives it's still passion is my hobby I love to share all the information right. about my bees how I get the honey from where the honey is coming one thing what I uh, never will do I never will heat my honey it's just pure from the hive into the jar and there's no heating filtering no mixing blending oh. completely no when you speak in natural you're up in the foothills and up mill downs with, with the heather the gorse it's it's real natural environment for the bees. Actually really lucky about this because in foot of the knock mill down we have no big apicultural things. There's not much spraying and uh, no any chemicalians and the bees actually flying three miles around the hives and uh, gathering all the blackberries, clover, uh, fireweeds and everything. So when you arrived in Ireland, first of all, where are you actually from? That's not a local accent number one and how did you end up where you're based now? I met my wife about 15 years ago. She's from Torlas and tip woman. Uh, tip woman, of course. Uh, <laughs> we won't mention her. <laughs> <laughs> no. The funny story is uh, my wife, uh, mom, used to live in Knock Mill Down already years ago. Oh. She married to Joe Delaney. He's living in uh, Torlas. Oh, but we bought a site in Knock Mill Down uh, from her uncle and we built actually a couple of miles away a house in uh, Knock Mill Down. And was the honey business something you're involved in back home and uh, or was it something that you developed? I'd be honest with you. No, my no. actually wife was nagging me about 10 years ago to go and uh, be involved with the beekeeping. Yes. And I said no, but eventually, you know, like Irish woman, yeah. <laughs> you just go. <laughs> you gave in. And I gave in. I went to the meeting in Dongaven for the beekeeping as a yes, association and uh, the bulb click and I is so lovely to actually keep bees. It's a really passion. A lot of people on the outside, and I've spoken to several landers before, are worried about working with bees. Um, everyone thinks of getting stung by bees and whatever. Were you initially frightened or, or did you take to it pretty easily and the whole procedure involved? I was not uh, really afraid from stung from bees and uh, of course there is sore from start when I started to use, there is really sore you swell. But after two, three years, if you get stung uh, by bee, it's, it's, I get just used. It's, uh, that be sometimes okay. maybe 20 things a day, but I'm not swelling anymore. You really I mean, love what you're at. 
I just You're I a can happy talk, man. I am kind, I can talk all day long about my bees and how I doing everything. Right. Marik, obviously you had an idea, you started producing this beautiful honey, then of course you had to sell it. Where do you sell most of your products and how important are the farmer markets both here in Dungarvan and indeed in Lismore as well? I selling in Lismore in uh, local shops like Sencha, so, uh, Sencha, Landos. Uh, I uh, selling as well in Cape Queen and Super Value. And uh, Dungarvan, I have uh, always uh, Blasta, Rob and Ann from Blasta is selling as well okay. to a country store and to eco store in uh, Dongarvan. So you're getting great support locally? Oh yeah, of course. I look, I, uh, it's just not the honey, it's also always the pollination of everything. It's such a big benefit. And Now, the range you have display here, obviously if you're a beautiful honey blossom, uh, not milled down honey blossom honey, but you also have the lovely, um, what do you actually call the, this honey? It's called uh, Kutkom, it's a section. Honeycomb. It's honeycomb, it's just from the from the hive yes. it's not extracting no nothing it's just you caught with the knife it's as natural as you can get n- natural as you can get and you can actually eat the wax and wax contains lots of vitamin B and it's really healthy for you now as regards Tilly's natural cosmetics obviously your good wife Michelle yes. is really the driver of this end you might tell our listeners about the range you have here I start to produce a lip balm and uh, I start to sell this to local pharmacy uh, Marimaina in uh, Lismo and then uh, with a while we did developed the dry skin salve for eczema and all the dry skin okay. uh, and then we developed as well hand cream it's uh, really good for hands and for feet and how is that going for you what that side of the business it's a really lovely this you see i producing lots of beeswax when i'm beekeeper okay. and all the lovely beeswax is coming to aura cosmetic so pure, natural again. pure natural there is no chemical involved nothing in the hand creams it's just the all, all organic stuff i won't hold you long more there's customers waiting to be served but as a as regards the farmer markets, how important is Dungarvan and there's more farmers market on a Sunday for you? It's really lovely to talk with all the people and explain uh, that the honey is not coming from anywhere else as a local honey, the local producer. And of course the food festival, the West Warford and the harvest are, are, are very important for you. The, the, unfortunately none this year but hopefully back next year. We're hoping for next year and uh, I'm waiting for the events. Well Mark, you're a long way from home. Where are you actually from? Uh, what city are you actually from? I'm actually from uh, Wrocław, right? F- a bit far away, bit and far uh, away. the thing is, I'm half German, half Polish. Uh, my mom is a German oh. and my dad is a, is a Polish. But you're very much a Warford man now, not a tip man. Uh, um, talk gee, to Michelle. I talk to my <laughs> wife. <laughs> you're on Jeez. the right side of the border. <laughs> Listen, very best to look with your not milled down honey and Tilly's natural cosmetic. It's a great story. Best to look. And I'm delighted that the people of West Warford are supporting you so well. Thanks for talking to me. Thank you. Farm View with Kieran O'Connor on WLR. With GlanbiaConnect.com. Thousands of products in the palm of your hand. And you're welcome back to part two of Farm View. Now, before I talk to legendary horse trainer John Kiley, let's have a look at some items from our farming calendar. Turning to our farmer markets and country markets, indeed, what an array of local farm fresh products we have on offer every week across the city and county. This Saturday morning, Wofford Farmers Market, John Roberts Square, Tremor Farmers Market, Priest Road, Tremor, and also, of course, Saturday morning, Strabley Farmers Market in Strably from 10 until 1. Sunday, Lismore Farmers Market, Castle Avenue, Lismore, running from 10 until 4. And also we have the Ardmore Farmers Market on Sunday, just off the Beach Car Park, which runs from 11 until 3. Thursdays, Dungarvan Farmers Market, as always, in Grattan Square, a hive of activity every Thursday from 9 until 2. While on Friday mornings, we've Dungarvan Country Markets, now back at the Causeway Tennis Club and Abbeyside from 9 until 1. And also in the city, we've Wofford Farmers Market in St. Olaf's Hall, again running from 9 until 1. Now on the show, jumping front, the very successful Shanakil House of Centre. Well, their summer leagues continue every Friday evening from 5 with the final juice to take place Friday next the 27th. We'll have more details on next week's programme. And a date for your dairy for dairy farmers. Don't forget the very important Chagas Moor Park event will take place over three days in September, Tuesday 14th to Thursday 16th to September. We'll have more details over the coming weeks on this big event for dairy farmers. So the Chagas Moor Park open days, put those dates in your diary. Farm View with Kieran O'Connor on WLR. With Glanbia Connect. 
Ireland's biggest online farming shop and more. Well on Thursday last on the opening meeting of the four day Tremor Festival in the winner's enclosure at the final race was John Kiley Liz Fennel Dungarvan and that winner marked an unbelievable record of wins with the Kiley family dating back to the early 50s so early in the week I went out to Liz Fennel to meet the man himself. John first of all getting a winner in Tremor is always special to you but it's unbelievable the association you've had with the track so winning in your local track to the Kiley family has always been something special. Yes we always got a thrill that's where we got the bug in 1953 we had our first runner there and she won and the local Pini O'Donnell rode her and she went out again the last day and she won next time we were so lucky because if we didn't have such a local track we mightn't have travelled much farther and so we got the bug and we're going there since and John you setting out of course your dad's you were steeped in horses yourself and Paddy and Matt and all of the family and David you, horses has always been your life but as you say the Tremor track always was something special for the Kylie family yes well the sire of our first runners stood in Listen Kill which was local to Tremor and at that time transport of mares wasn't easy they had to be walked to the nearest stallion and when the foal was born he was taken back in a foal trap uh, to be grazed and grown until they matured to be three and four year olds so it was local and John at what age did you decide racing was going to be your career or was it always going to be your career <laughs> I'm sure every young person in the country when they leave school wonder what future they'll have and I wouldn't have been any different from them I was at home I was keen on farming and I didn't like school and my parents were encouraging me to go to school but we happened to have a few horses on the farm so I dedicated my time to riding those horses. I can tell you there wasn't much money from them. It was a labour of love. Yeah, but we got such a thrill and it has continued. And John, people might not realise out here in Lisfeld you also have been running a very successful dairy farm and they kind of complemented each other over the years. When my mother died, she realised there's little or no return from horses so she said whatever you'll do keep your herd of cows and I listened to her and I'm not sorry John has Morford become uh, an unbelievable hotbed of national hunt racing always had been but in the last few decades in particular the number of horses and small trainers and large trainers within the county has been unreal and successful trainers well I suppose that's to do with Irish natural instinct for horses people sometimes would feed their horse before they'd feed themselves and naturally and that's the beauty of racing and having the facility in Tremor which almost passed by but for the effort of locals who put their heads together and revitalised it and it's there for hopefully the next hundred years. And John really people might not realise today but 30 odd years ago it was really in jeopardy it looked like we might lose trauma but as you say certain individuals, business people and people in, in, into the horse industry saved what could have been a disaster for the area to lose the trauma track. Definitely in my lifetime I have seen at least five race courses go by the board and the saddest one of all was Tralee and it just goes to show that without a local effort anything won't survive mm. whether it be GAA or Hurling or soccer it's it's the interest but Tralee was one of the most successful race meetings it coincided with the Rose of Tralee and yet when the chips were down there wasn't enough interest in the area to keep it going hence it's gone I saw Baldail go Phoenix Park go mm. Tum go, Mullingar go, just for lack yeah. of interest. And John, really, from a trainer's point of view, having that local track, as we mentioned earlier, is so important. And it's only when a facility like Tremor, if it wasn't there, people would only start saying, why didn't we keep it? So it's really gone from strength to strength. Unfortunately, you hadn't crowds last week, but my God, well done to Owen and current chairman, Carl Casey, and all the directors over the years. Well, those are the people we have to thank for having it. Yes. Mr. Yeah. Peter Queeley, I'm sure, was the instinct in the beginning of it. The former chairman. Yeah. yeah. And John, as regards training horses, one thing that I've noticed with you over the year, you're a great man to give an animal time. You don't rush the animals. And at what stage would you go to an owner and say, look, we're on a, a beaten docket here? Or do you always feel every horse has a potential? It's finding the race or the distance that would suit. Well, for me, owners were always important because without the owner, any of us wouldn't have horses. And the owners need to be fairly comfortable financially 
because it's a big expense and sometimes they may never have a return but they still keep coming and john i know you're in your 80s and you won't yeah. mind me saying that oh. but uh, you're you're out at the gallops again this morning you haven't lost the enthusiasm but uh, it's fantastic it's really uh, it's part and parcel of your life but you haven't lost that enthusiasm for preparing horses for the next big day no i get pleasure from it and uh, it's been always my interest to have something like that yeah uh, to be occupied with and when my health permits me I'd like to continue Well John once again well done it was a great success a great week last week for local connections but in particular for yourself to have a winner at Tremor Festival keeping up that great tradition dating back to the early 50s to you and all the Kylie family your late parents your wife Mary and your brothers and all involved and all the crew here Tommy and all the lads it's a real team effort but well done keeping this Fennel flag final and the Kylie flag flying and also of course keeping up your great support for Tremor John thanks for talking to me Thank you Kim. And before I go on the racing front, we had a good week again for local Warford Connections Cross Channel. We had wins for Dungarvan jock Trevor Whelan, who was in the winner's enclosure at Nottingham and Bath. And also fantastic win for Dungarvan owner-trainer combination of John and Miriam Queeley, who were in the winner's enclosure at York with a very, very impressive winner indeed. So well done to all involved there. While back home, what a four days we had at Tremor for locals. Dungarvan trainer John Queeley in the winner's enclosure there again. Also Tallow trainer Ken Bolts for the Connery family from Clashmore. Dungarvan trainer John Kiley, who we featured on this week's programme, Rack- Cormac trainer Pat Flynn as well as knocking trainer Henry de Bramot and Tallow trainer the Evergreen and owner John Morrison from Tallow while I also want to say well done to Michael Connor stable jockey at Henry de Bramot's on becoming leading rider at the festival so well done to Owen, Carl and all involved in fantastic four days at Tremor and also during the week with a nice winner for Ardmore owner breeder at Leperstown for Brian Gleeson so that's it for this week's programme once again my thanks to Ollie for all his help in putting this week's programme together so stay safe and I'll talk to you same time next week Farm View with Kieran O'Connor on WLR with GlanbiaConnect.com, Ireland's biggest online farming shop and more.